what's the good word y'all dkb here so in the midst of a huge win in green bay against aaron Rodgers and company and keep in mind since lafleur has taken over as the head coach there aaron Rodgers does not lose home games they should legitimately be worried as jairi alexander pointed out before we faced them this week and you know in the event that they did suffer a loss against us now aside from all of that Good feelings, ecstatic fans galore. We did have one person in the building who's feeling a little bit left out and on the outside looking in and Elijah Moore. So there are some tweets that went out. Rich Samini pointed out a very interesting stat that Elijah Moore was not targeted a single time this game. That wasn't actually true. He did get targeted once, but it ended up being nullified by a penalty. But irregardless, due to stats, he's essentially been targeted zero times. Now, this has actually been trending this way for the last couple of weeks and Zach Wilson's took the reins. And it's an interesting situation. So with Joe Flacco, we got extremely pass happy and whether that was trusting that the veteran uh, was going to put the ball in great hands and we were going to see an extremely productive pass offense out of him versus Zach Wilson, who still hasn't played a full year's worth of games yet um and we're running the offense through Brees hall who's been coming on extremely hot lately irregardless of that it is very interesting that he has essentially has been getting the denzel mims treatment not in the fact that he's not really playing or not seeing the snaps or that he's not effective in the offense but more so just specifically for the point that he is almost invisible in these games since zach wilson has come back now there's a couple factors for that again Brees Hall has been extremely hot, uh, and the offense is meant to run through the running backs. Mike LaFleur has said this repeatedly, two tight end sets, run the offense through the running backs, we'll open up play action, we'll look to take our shots when we can. Now, Zach Wilson has also been playing the status quo game manager you know, definition role, which is something that I would say uh, is surprising to a lot of us. Zach Wilson hasn't been the reason that we've lost any games, 3-0, and but he has only been the reason that we've won one, one time, and that was against the Pittsburgh Steelers when he orchestrated uh, that fourth quarter offense that was, you know, spectacular. Since then, he hasn't been that great. He's been doing just enough to get by and not be the red flag if we ended up losing any of those games as to, you know, what went wrong. I'm still expecting he's going through growing pains. He hasn't even played a full year's worth of um, you know, games, but it is a little intriguing because Elijah Moore and Zach Wilson had some budding chemistry last season. And ever since there, it's been wholesale changes with the talent that we brought in, but you still had the feeling that Elijah Moore was going to have a breakout season, even with us drafting Brees Hall, even with Michael Carter coming off an excellent season himself, and uh, even with us drafting Garrett Wilson. So it's very interesting that he's been relegated to the back seat. Now, a couple interesting stats to go along with this. Week three was his most productive game in terms of being uh, involved in a game plan. He had nine targets against the Bengals. That happened to be a loss. Uh, there's plenty of film breakdown that, you know, advise why he wasn't already having phenomenal games three weeks into the season. A lot of it was that we've been using him on a lot of deep plays, routes that were going to take time to develop a little bit. The offensive line was hemorrhaging and going through, you know, uh, a tremendous overturn week after week. So it just wasn't something that was ever going to really be effective. Secondly, since the Bengals game, we played three games. Pittsburgh, we played Miami, we just played Green Bay. He had nine targets against the Bengals. He's only had eight targets in three games since then. One of the final other stats that I would say is interesting and something to keep in mind is he's not even close to being one of the, the top you know target shares on his own team. Now, with the influx of talent, this should have been expected, but you still feel like he would have been in the top three. Now, ahead of him is Corey Davis. Uh... Garrett Wilson, who's actually the the team lead in target snaps, uh, or excuse me, targets that um, you know are being thrown his way, and then uh, it is Tyler Conklin, and then it's Brees Hall, who's actually been uh, heavily factored into the running game, uh, excuse me, receiving game, maybe even more so than a lot of us thought. So he's fifth in targets on his own team. And then we kind of get this, uh, you know, we kind of start getting these tweets that came out after Richard Mini posted his stat about him being targeted zero times, 
which, you know, felt like a little bit of inning. Extremely happy that the team is winning, but you get the feeling it, it didn't seem like it was malice or anything with it. He really just wants to be a part of helping his team win. And if you're not even being targeted, yes, you may be opening up plays for other guys and stuff, etc. But ultimately, you're not doing anything to help fill the stat sheet and you weren't doing anything productive in terms of moving the needle, uh, you know, tangibly in order to help the team. So I don't see this becoming a huge long on drawn issue, uh, but there's, you know, there's already certain pieces in place where you can say, he felt like maybe he's been underutilized or that there's been some kind of mental struggles uh, when he speaks about, you know, speaking with A.J. Brown, some of his conversations with Michael Carter through like the one Jets drive content um, and different things like that. So with him kind of being in this Denzel Mims ish, you know, realm that he's in, I'm hoping this doesn't blow up into anything further, but it does make you think if this pass offense doesn't necessarily ever get going and we only ever do just enough to get by and hopefully the running game just continues to pound and uh, drive through teams and the defense stays as, uh, you know, fantastic as it's been. <clears throat> what 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 are we, you know, what are we really looking at here? Corey Davis is probably going to be walking out the door by next season. That leaves us with Garrett Wilson. It does leave us with Elijah Moore. It technically still leaves us with Denzel Mims, assuming he's not traded by November 1st. Uh, but you never want your superstars, and I still feel like Elijah Moore is a superstar, to be disgruntled on your team. And keep in mind, when we were talking about Elijah Moore three, four weeks into the season, one of the stats that everybody seen at some point was he was the NFL leading receiver in routes run uh, without targets or catches being thrown his way, something to that effect. And uh, <laughs> guess where he's still at on that list. So that lets you know how much he's been doing for this offense and how little he's been able to produce for it based on the quarterbacks. With Joe Flacco is the fact that he couldn't connect due to a lot of these deep pass targets and uh, contested catches that he was being um you know, tossed into and then with Zach Wilson, it's been the low completion percentage, the lack of chemistry and uh, just not really being able to get going as a pass offense as a whole. Garrett Wilson's been down to Corey Davis has been the most consistent kind of player uh, with connecting with Zach Wilson. So we'll see what happens. Maybe this turns things around, but it's definitely an interesting situation to keep tabs on. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Does Elijah Moore have a right uh, to feel extremely underutilized within this offense. Um, and this is something that you guys expect to see turned around. But I'll catch you guys again. Peace.